We're just waiting for the mayor to, to come online. Um, uh, the mayor usually doesn't participate. In, oh, he uh, doesn't. Oh, okay. All right. So three commissioners. So I think you're the guy. Oh, okay. All right. So uh, good evening. My name is Paul Brake. I'm the city manager uh, for the city of Royal Oak and uh, welcome you to this meeting. Um, so my first time attending um, and look forward to the, the dialogue. So I uh, uh, appreciate everyone uh, joining us this evening and, and engaging in the uh, various um, topics that we have set aside. And um, uh, from my understanding, this is a, a kind of informal sort of format. Is that correct? So, okay. Um, so I am without the benefit of having an agenda in front of me, but it's... Uh, it says uh, roll call, though. We've never done that, but maybe because it's Zoom? Oh, okay. All right. I don't know if we're taking um, actual meeting minutes and if it's even necessary to do a roll call. So we um, typically would at least go around the room and have everyone introduce themselves just because for you, Paul, too, just to understand who sure. we're in the district as well. That'd be okay. Okay. Uh, okay, well, I'll start. <laughs> Mary Beth Fitzpatrick, <laughs> superintendent of Royal Oak Schools, and, and Paul, welcome. It's it's good to meet with you and the Royal Oak team. Yeah, likewise. Um, so I'm Deb Anderson. I'm on the school board, and it's nice to meet you as well. Thank you. So continuing on the school board side, Jeff Brinker, welcome to Royal Oak. Um, All right, thank you. I did check in with Gary Briggs via text. He's having trouble connecting, so he's not sure if he's going to be on. But also on our staff, we have a couple of members. Kathy, Patrick, would you like to introduce yourselves? All right, I'm Kathy Abella. I'm the Executive Director of Finance and Operations for Royal Oak Schools. I'm Patrick Murphy, the Operations Manager for Royal Oak Schools. Okay, we'll switch to the City Commissioner. City yeah, there side you go. Um, City Commissioner Melanie Macy, also parent of three Royal Oak students. I'm Randy Lavasser, City Commissioner. Kyle Dubuck, Royal Oak City Commissioner, also the parent of three Royal Oak students. And we also have staff that, that's present. So, Holly, do you mind kind of kicking off the lead there? Uh, sure. Uh, Holly Donahue, I'm the city engineer. Um, and I have two girls that will hopefully be starting at Royal Oak Schools this fall. Uh, Tim Twing, Director of Community Development. And, uh, Dave Gillum, City Attorney. Nice to see here all of you school board folks again. Um, I'm happy to say that I've returned to my part-time job as City Attorney. <laughs> well, I believe that's everyone that's on the call, so... I think we just added the third school board member, Mr. Briggs. Want to solve? Oh yes. Else? How are you? I'm uh, Gary Briggs. Finally able to see you guys. Nice meeting you. So since we have posted an agenda, it says uh, public comment. So we did have a comment period between uh, four and five, um, and there were no comments. So. So we'll um, continue on, on on current projects on, on the, the city side. So um, uh, Holly, do you want to start us out? Sure. Um, I don't have anything uh, too earth shattering to share here, um, but we have several construction projects going on on streets this summer and um, several of them are w within the realm of access to some of the schools. So um, near Churchill, we have some concrete patchwork that's getting done on DeVillain, Ardmore, and Girard, and that's finishing up right now, so that should be no issue. Um, near Oak Ridge, we are doing some concrete patching on East Lawrence, and that should be getting done in the next couple weeks. So again, that, that should be done well before school gets going for the year. Um, near Northwood Elementary, we just finished resurfacing that really nasty intersection at Lloyd and McDonald that was in really bad shape. So um, that's completed. We just have a little bit more, you know, sod restoration to do in the next week or so, um, and that'll be all wrapped up. 
Um, and then finally, near Oakland Elementary, we uh, just finished up water main work on Helene. That's from Barrett to Brockton. And there's still some concrete patchwork to get done. That's the only one that it might be cutting it a little bit close to the start of the school year, but I've told the contractor it needs to be done before then. So probably later in August, but the goal is before school starts. So that's really all I had to share for construction impacts. Okay, all right, well, thank you, Holly. Um, so I don't think we have anyone else that's online. Uh, Dave and, and Tim can speak to the um, uh, unfinished business. So we'll, we'll turn that to the um, school district and current projects. Sure, so I'll uh, ask my team to fill in as well, Pat Murphy and, and Kathy, if you guys wanna add. So, you know, the, the two projects that we're working on um, as much as possible is the second half of Royal Oak High School. So you'll see a lot of construction around there. Um, they're finishing up the new cafeteria on the west side, uh, north and west side of the building, um, as well as the second half of all of our classrooms. And then the other big project is Oakland Elementary, which is really a substantial amount of work in terms of driveways and drop-off zones. Uh, an addition being added to the corner of the building as well as, um, you know, redoing all of the interior classrooms, hallways, et cetera. So um, all of the projects are, you know, on as much of a schedule as they can. We lost a lot of time in the spring when construction shut down. A um, couple, you know, individual sections of the projects uh, at both schools will probably be open uh, once school begins, um, but they will uh, will work around them until they, they can be fully open. If if we're all there, uh, we'll, we shall see. That's yet to come. But um, Pat and Kathy, if you wanted to add or add any of our other projects, maybe from other sinking fund or things that are going on at our other schools, ROMs. Pat, did you want to take it? Oh, go ahead. Okay, so I uh, ROMs is the brick restoration that's going on in the back part of the building. Um, we've already finished the roof repair that was going on over the pool area. We have a, a chiller replacement that's going to go on at Upton Elementary. Uh, we did a refresh of our gym at Churchill um, Community Center. I believe those are the bigger projects. We're finished and we have finishing touches that are being put on Keller and Oak Ridge from last year's construction. So you might see a little activity around those two schools as they do some of our punch list items. Pat, have I missed anything? Nope. Okay, <laughs> so those are the things that we have going on. Okay, well, very good. Um, hearing nothing else, we'll get into uh, unfinished business. Um, so we have uh, the stormwater utility update. Um, uh, Holly, can you uh, take the lead on that one? Sure. Yeah, I wanted to put this on here just because I know it's such a hot button issue uh, for the school district. Um, and the update is I, I really don't have a whole lot to update right now. Um, we've been directed by the commission to really just put everything on pause at the moment uh, while we wait for um, some legal issues to get through um, the city of Detroit. You know, people are trying to stop their stormwater utility. And so that's been appealed to the Michigan Supreme Court and it's just, it's kind of pending there right now to, to see what the Supreme Court's gonna do with it. If they'll listen to it or just deny it, who knows? So we really don't have a good idea when that's going to get resolved. Um, and then the other piece is of course, the legislation that we're waiting to pass um, for Michigan for stormwater utilities. We didn't wanna move forward till that's final. Um, in talking with our consultant that's been really working with um, legislators to get this pushed through, um, kind of running out of runway for this year. Um, he's thinking there might be a chance to get it passed at the lame duck session after the election, but honestly, that seems pretty unlikely to me. And this will most likely get reintroduced in 2021 and kind of start that whole cycle all over again of introducing it and getting support for it. So, like I said, I don't have a whole lot to update except that there's a big question mark. Who knows when this stuff is going to get resolved. Um, but at this point, everything's on pause. We're not doing any future work um, on the utility itself. Okay. Well, thank you, Holly. Is there any questions before we move on um, um, regarding that? Uh, it appears that that will continue as a standing uh, agenda item. So. Uh, so next up that we have under unfinished business is medical and recreation 
uh, marijuana facility locations. So I guess uh, uh, Dave Gillum, can you start that conversation? Then I'll have Tim speak to uh, um, things pertaining to zoning. Sure. Uh, yeah, Paul. Let me. Uh, I'll start with generally with from the licensing perspective. Um, the commission has been discussing its options relative to both <clears throat> medical marijuana and recreational marijuana for, I would say, probably, seriously, for probably about a, a year and a half. Um, in part, we were waiting to see <clears throat> um, what guidance came from the state of Michigan in terms of administrative regulations, um, in terms of what some of the other communities that were very anxious to be on the cutting edge did to see if we could kind of learn from their experiences and potentially from their mistakes. Um, ultimately, what is the commission is at this point decided is um, at this point not to pursue uh, regulation of medical marijuana. Um, that is an option that the city would have down the road, but at this point in time, um, the staff and administration have been directing their attention or concentrating their efforts on recreational marijuana. Um, in order for us to allow medical marijuana, um, we affirmatively have to opt in under the state statutes. We have not done that, um, but again, we would have the option to do that down the road if that's something that the, the city commission decides that the city does want to allow and regulate. So in terms of recreational, um, the way the state act is structured, it's basically the opposite from um, medical marijuana with the medical, you have to opt in. If you don't opt in, the activity is not allowed. Uh, with recreational, again, as I indicated, it's just the opposite. If you don't opt out, it's allowed. So the default is to allow recreational marijuana. Um, we have opted out um, up until this time, again, to see what would develop on the state level and also to see what the experience of some of our neighbors um, would be. Um, at this point in time though, we are anticipating that um, our opt out on recreational marijuana will be expiring in the middle of August. Um, towards that end, um, we are currently working on uh, getting a, a licensing ordinance for recreational marijuana establishments and related zoning ordinance amendments approved. Uh, the city commission has approved a licensing ordinance on first reading um, a, a week ago tomorrow. It was actually at a special meeting on the 16th that the licensing ordinance was approved on first reading. We're anticipating that the licensing ordinance will be approved on second reading um, a week from Monday at our next regular meeting on the 27th. Um, assuming that it is approved, um, at the meeting on the 27th, the way the ordinance is drafted, it would then become effective on August 15th, which is when the opt-out is scheduled to expire. Um, the state allows for potentially nine different types of recreational marijuana licenses, as well as a couple different types of special licenses. Um, where the city commission has landed at this point in time is to potentially allow all nine kinds of licenses, but with significant restrictions as to the number of licenses and as to where those businesses would be able to operate. Um, as to the number of licenses, we are allowed to put a cap on the number of licenses and the commission is moving towards a cap on all the classes. Um, generally speaking, the limit would be one license for each of the different classes and the classes cover really everything from the, um, the organizations that would be growing marijuana to the, the organizations that would be then transporting it to some other location where it could be processed um, and packaged for resale and then transported to another area for sale. Um, there's also um, a license for um, an entity to test the quality of the marijuana and make sure that uh, there's nothing uh, uh, poisonous or harmful in there. Um, so the commission again is proposing to license potentially all nine. Um, Tim can talk more about the zoning end of it, end of it but uh, as proposed now, 
Um, the uh, licensing framework that's in place would um, again generally allow one of all the different types of licenses with the exception of two classes, one which is the marijuana retailer, which is someone that would sell marijuana commercially um, in a storefront, so to speak. Um, and then also a micro, micro business, which is kind of a one-stop shop. And that is a, a, a licensee that would be allowed to grow, package, and sell their own marijuana on the same premises. Um, the commission has indicated at this point in time that they would like to allow two of each of those with some restrictions as to um, where where they would be located um, relative to each other and as to the zoning, which again, Tim can talk about um, relative to schools and the school district's interests. Um, the state act does allow the city to prohibit any kind of a marijuana establishment within 1000 feet of any kind of an existing public or private school K through 12 and the city commission has taken advantage of that provision and the uh, ordinance as proposed now does prohibit any kind of a marijuana establishment within a thousand feet of any school. Um, the practical effect is that the, the, most of the businesses, if this uh, framework goes through, um, would be located either along the Woodward corridor or in the industrial property on the north end of town. Um, but again, I, I'll let Tim get more into the zoning on this. Okay, thanks, Dave. Tim, can you speak to the, the zoning provisions as it relates to the decision that the city commission will be making next week? Sure, sure. I think the only thing I really need to add to it is, as Dave said, the zoning ordinance talks about allowing uh, the various license types in general business, which is along Woodward Avenue, basically from 11 mile to uh, 14 mile. Um, it excludes some of the PUDs uh, that you that are along there that the commission has approved, uh, Woodward Corners and some of the others. So it would be a, potentially a special land use in general business. And that's limited to the retailer and micro business type licenses. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the industrial, general industrial districts would allow uh, basically all types of those licenses, again, as a special land use, uh, except for like the special event and, and those sorts of things, which are precluded in both, other than when the commission might grant a special event on it. And those general industrial districts are Coolidge and 14 roughly in that area. Uh, there's some over on Bel Air, south of 12, uh, near the Kroger site. Uh, there is some general industrial south of Lincoln and east of uh, uh, Maine. Uh, those are the primary industrial areas that uh, potentially they could uh, locate in, in. And again, as Dave touched on, they, there are some setback requirements in there that would limit eligible locations. The K-12 1,000 uh, foot setback. Uh, the commission's also talking about other setbacks from uh, parks and religious in institutions and those uh, I don't know that will get enacted. That'll be a discussion for uh, the second reading and Monday night uh, uh, in front of the commission and whether those get included. Um, process wise, the commission also has to identify the license holder that they want us to process for the so the first step would be the city manager and the license selecting or prioritizing them one through some level uh, the first or the highest rated uh, priority one would be the one the planning staff would process and then process them in order uh, based on those setback requirements and that's all based on what's currently been drafted and passed on uh, first reading. Um, I think that's what I'll add at this point and if there's questions we'll address them. Okay, thanks Tim. So I'll open it up and if there's um, uh, any questions. I just, I have a question. So uh, with the intent to grant one per um, the nine classes and with the two exceptions of, of two each, how long is that uh, held to before there might be another wave of consideration 
um, by the commission or is that not known until this really gets off the ground? I would say the, the latter, but I think that the time frame uh, upon approval, and this is net speaking, you know, this is first time for us, but um, talking to my counterparts in um, uh, adjoining communities, it's usually about 90 day process just to, to grant the license alone. That, that's not to um, uh, speak to the, the special land use permit process. Um, you know, I'll let Tim speak to that, what the time frame would be. But from my understanding, first the license will be granted, um, the, the applications will be reviewed, a recommendation will be made to the commission. They will approve that. And then, uh, then the process will be that the, um, the proprietor, the operator, well, pursue the, um, the special land use that'll be site specific. Um, so, Tim, can you speak to what, what the time frame would be once the licenses are granted? Yeah, and, 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 and I, from um, the planning commission process, they do meet once a month. Again, once the, the priority list is provided, if a petitioner, has, if another petitioner has a location within a thousand feet of that first priority one, uh, obviously they'd be excluded. Uh, the commission, I believe right now also is limiting it one to general business as far as a retailer or microprocessor and, uh, and, or, and one or micro business um, and one, one for each of the other uh, classes in general industrial. So potentially we may be reviewing more than um, one request at a time, but it would be uh, limited to those licensing provisions and how they were ranked. Um, once they're ranked, we would let them apply through the special land use process to the planning commission. Uh, there is notice requirements from each site of 300 feet. Uh, so depending on the site, we would give that notice for the public hearing, post it in the paper. Uh, the planning commission, as I said, meets once a month. Uh, they would hold the hearing and in this case, make a recommendation to the city commission as to whether or not to approve uh, the special land use and site plan. That recommendation would forward to the city commission. Uh, the city commission under the drafting of this particular use or types of uses is finally act upon at the city commission. Uh, it's my understanding if the city commission approves that, then the city clerk would actually issue the license for uh, each uh, each one of those based on that approval. If the city commission rejects it uh, and turns it down, uh, they would indicate the reasonings for that and, and uh, those sorts of items. And then we would potentially move on to the second priority uh, 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 request and, and process, process those up. If it's approved, uh, we and, and all the licenses that have been allocated have been blessed. We would stop until uh, the commission changes the licensing ordinance. Tim, how long would that take? Uh, it, it varies. Yeah. I mean, the planning commission the planning commission could um, act upon it at one meeting. They could uh, forward their recommendation to the commission. Um, they could take more time and request additional information. In best case scenario, um, I would say it would probably take um, at least two months, possibly three to get through to the city commission. Okay. Um, because as the way the city commission falls, the planning commission would act on it. And then we've got the deadlines that you're aware of that in order to get in front of the city commission. So it may be two weeks later. So I would guess six to nine weeks to, to get through that process. And so with the licensing and the, the zoning end of things, it, it sounds like combined, but you're looking at about a six month process before they're even That's, getting approval. Then, yeah, because uh, I, I believe it's gonna take some time to, for them to get prioritized uh, through the way, it, the way it's, if I understand it correctly from uh, Dave and the licensing, you can dive in on it, but the, uh, first part would be a prioritization of all the applicants and that's going to involve a lot of departments and, and the city manager's office to prioritize those. Okay. 
Well, and yeah, Kyle, go ahead. Uh, add to the question about how long would it be before the commission considers expanding the number of licenses? Um, I mean, I can't speak for a future commission or my fellow commissioners, but I think our conversation's been pretty clear that the reason we're keeping a real tight rein on uh, the number of licenses right now is because, you know, we know what we know from studies and from other communities, but we want to take time to see um, how this works in our community. So I would anticipate a year more, you know, two years um, after getting these licenses uh, up and running before you'd see any real conversation about lifting the cap. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, okay. I just have a quick question. How much interest have you had so far? <laughs> um, I have three calls today asking what, and we're not processing. Uh, we're not answering phone calls from people because we don't know um, the process that they're going to follow until the commission finally acts upon uh, the ordinance provisions. But I know in the planning community development end of things, and I'm sure that Dave's office I know that Todd Fenton in the Economic Development Office is getting inquiries. Um, I am aware of people that have put down purchase offers on multiple properties in town in terms of speculating. So, uh, and we've had probably anywhere from 20 potential users show up at uh, the uh, Planning Commission meeting. So I would anticipate a great deal of interest. Yeah, we, we all get, as Tim indicated, we all get uh, multiple calls and emails every single day. Um, any other questions on this topic? No, I just, I would say I, I do appreciate all the information yeah. and how lengthy the process is and how thorough you're all being around it. Certainly we have, you know, I get emails from parents and um, there's, you know, some misinformation out there, like you better stop it tomorrow or the shop's going to be there next week, kind of urgency and having this amount of information to be able to respond to some of those questions and or redirect some of our parents, you know, to those of you that could answer them more specifically, I think will be really helpful. Um, oh, it, absolutely. I, I would say this generally, there is a, um, an information page that's on our website you have to click through it, but if you go to the city manager's office and it says uh, uh, adult recreation marijuana, and there's pretty extensive information um, about that and really all the, the vetting that's been done uh, by the, uh, the city commission as well as staff, um, and, and certainly a lot of information. Obviously, all of this predates me, um, but um, it's indicated that this has been at least a year and a half long uh, journey in this process. So, um, before moving on, either one of the uh, commissioners, Macy or Levasseur, is there any comments that you wish to make uh, regarding this topic? Uh, no, not this time. Okay, all right. I agree with Commissioner Dubuck that this is um, something we're we're trying out to see how it goes, and we're not planning to make any sudden movements. Um, I think for a while while we see the impact. So okay, well thank you. Um, is there any other questions on the on the that topic before we jump into new business? So um, so under the new business, uh, I will take that one this potential city use of school buildings to host socially distanced meetings. And let me give you the backstory because I, I think it's kind of resolved on its own. So we're in the process of building a, a brand new city hall. And prior to moving all of our um, uh, technical equipment, our telecommunications and uh, computer equipment all have to be taken offline. Uh, we will be down starting on Tuesday August 11th and the latest that we think that we'll be back up will be the following Thursday, August 20th. Um, given the, the COVID circumstances and, and not knowing how long we'll be continuing on uh, Zoom meetings or when the, the governor allows us to uh, conduct socially social distance meetings, the, the thought was that 
we're getting into a, a scheduling issue uh, between those nine days that I just mentioned. Um, from my understanding that some of the meetings that were contemplated have since been postponed uh, until the following month. So it, it's kind of a moot point um, on our end, but it was uh, uh, contemplated thinking that if we could resume uh, in-person meetings um, to, um, to make the request if within your boardroom of uh, conducting, say, like a planning commission meeting. But I'm thinking that's not the case, and that when we would be resuming the meetings would be in September. Um, it's our intent, our goal is that we will open the new building on Thursday, August 20th, and we'll be operating at that facility. So it's just that, that nine day uh, window that I mentioned. Uh, but the, the groups that we're trying to sort out the meeting agenda, that they've since uh, um, uh, voted to postpone the meeting. So I, I, again, it's really a moot point. But since we put that out there, I wanted to give you the, kind of the backstory and, and let you know why we're making that, that request. Um, so that's, that's a bit of a challenge that we're preparing ourselves for. Um, our email server will, um, or email system rather, it's a cloud-based, will be operating, our web page will be, but in terms of operations, um, it's, it, we're going to be in a shutdown and, and everyone packing their boxes and, and moving everything over to the new building. So uh, wish us luck in that regard that uh, we, we get through this uh, uh, unscathed. And so, um, but pretty conscientious of, of what the, the impact is to the, um, you know, the, the, the residents, property owners, patrons, because it's not only City Hall, uh, but it's it's taking everything down. So the the telephones that are in uh, even in the library, in the district court, in the police station, all of that will be impacted. Uh, we will have telephones available through uh, 911. Of course, will be maintained. The police department does have uh, two separate landlines, a non-emergency number, and that will be providing information for those. Um, not uh, public safety emergencies, but emergencies in the sense of if a storm comes through, I'm giving an example, and uh, a tree is down and needs to be removed, we'll have um, a means of uh, someone answering the phone, um, but it'll be pretty minimal and be very specific. So if someone's calling about a water bill or something like that, we'll ask the person to patiently wait to when the office normally resumes. But those items that truly cannot wait, uh, that could cause a greater problem, um, will we'll allow that, that communication. So kind of a long-winded sort of response, but wanted to, to give you an indicator that uh, why we put that on uh, the, um, the agenda. And um, um, uh, that's, uh, that's the backstory on that. So I'll pause if there's any comments or questions on and what's going to be happening in the month of August. So hearing none. Wait, no, I have one, I have one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's all right, um, <laughs> this, is, this is actually for the school district. When I saw this on the agenda, it made me wonder if the school district was also interested in using any city areas in terms of setting up for school. I know there's been some talk about outdoor spaces and many of our parks used to be schools. And I wondered if there was any thought or if there's anything we could do to facilitate what I'm sure is a challenging uh, planning process for the fall. Uh, you know, our biggest challenge from the governor's um, return to school roadmap plan is the social distancing. So just, just pure floor space. Luckily for us, um, several of our uh, elementary buildings are also larger spaces. They're not classrooms, but we have a lot of, of space. The bigger challenge will be ROMS or the high school because you're either in classrooms or you're passing to get to larger spaces. But um, also we know those are older students that may respond better to a hybrid schedule where we could actually limit the number of kids that come to school in a given day. Um, those are just one or two of the hundreds of moving parts at one time, but I, I certainly would keep it in mind that if we thought there was something from the city point of view that could assist us with the things that we're running, um, we're running all outdoor camps right now. We're not running anything inside just because of, you know, it's a less risk. There's, there's never no risk, it seems in this, but 
it's a lot less risk if we are um, outdoor. So we're at least limited to that right now um, and doing okay with the spaces we have, but I, I appreciate the outreach and, and our teams, Pat and Kathy are on facility and operations. We'll keep that in mind. Okay, very good. She's giving the thumbs up. So thank you. That's a good question. So next on the agenda is the, the next meeting date. Um, so is this conducted quarterly? Oh, I'm sorry. Would you have a question, Deb? I do. Yeah, I do have a question. What about the uh, primary election coming up? So the the primary election, even though our, our building is closed, uh, we will be opening up the old city hall on um, Saturday, uh, August 1st, and then of course the election, um, which is on the 4th. Um, only the city's clerk's office will be the only portion of the building uh, that anyone will be able to access and will be providing information. But for anyone that um, uh, wants to apply for an absentee ballot, uh, uh, I believe the, the deadline has not passed. And so, you know, the, there's been a really big push to, for voters to vote by mail and and I know the city clerk's office, but we are operating in a building. And so I, I've walked in there and it's it's quite a production that is being undertaken. So um, that will be um, uh, held um, and without any disruption, um, but there may be some additional consideration. I would say for anyone that's that's considering coming out on Saturday or on election day to, to stay posted on that and the information on the city's website and uh, on, on specifics about that, so. Thank you. You're welcome, thank you. Yes, sir. So a couple meetings ago, and it's truly a moot point now since we're not in school, but the school speed limit signs that lit up during the day were malfunctioning on a regular basis. And I believe past engineer had a plan for repairing. Holly, I don't know if you know anything about this, but the school signs, again, we're not worried about them until August or late September, but um, that was a headache in January-ish. Any update on that? You know, I, I thought that that had already been handled by our electrician, but I can follow up on that. I remember, I can't remember what school I was driving by, uh, maybe Oak Ridge. Uh, My recollection is there was a number, you know, a number of them were fixed, but they didn't have enough parts. And we talked as a group saying, okay. get the parts, but I don't know what the resolution was. Okay, I'll follow up on that and make sure it's done before school starts. Pat uh, Murphy, did you have an update on that? Yeah. When school closed or where we were? The update, as I recall, is that there were two replacement signs ordered and those were installed. One was installed on 13 Mile Road and one was installed on 12 Mile Road by Northwood. However, the remainder of the signs remain not working. Um, the, my understanding, the last update Matt gave us was that those parts were going to be reordered and installed, um, and I think it had to coordinate with the city's fiscal year in terms of what budget was available, but Matt anticipated that we would have um, all of the signs working before the start of the school year. Okay, well, I appreciate you bringing that up and I'll definitely follow up on that. I, I thought it was just those two, so I'll uh, get in touch with DPS and we'll get it going. Okay, thanks, Holly. Is there uh, any other items or um, uh, questions for jumping into scheduling the next meeting? Hearing none, is this a quarterly meeting or bi-monthly? Uh, a quarterly, okay. So um, one of the things, Paul, that you and I talked about today is just the, um, really this is a, a function of the school board itself. It's one of the yes. committees of the board and it's obviously collaborative with the city. And I think we just started, you know, your house, our house kind of hosting the meetings. And now that they've been online, they've become um, just, it's a little different in terms of formatting and such. But right. um, I think we'll take the lead on the, the next one and, and have it in school if we can be face to face. And then if not, uh, we'll be virtual at that point as well. Um, typically, I think between uh, 
the committees themselves, and Deb, maybe you can help me with the scheduling. Paula has the schedule for each of the meetings for the new year. Do you set this, the set meeting dates or do we just kind of look at where they fall? I actually don't. I mean, it just seems like it's pretty much the, around the same time every three months on a Wednesday at six o'clock, but yeah. I'll, I'll follow up with my secretary, Paula, and make sure the dates are put out there. Um, okay. Confirm for the, you know, what, what they typically would have fallen on. I think we have moved a meeting here or there, depending on some action happening at either the city or the school in the past, but we try sure, to sure. Okay. once a quarter. And obviously the goal would be to have the meeting set up far enough in advance. And if we have to change them, we have to change them, but for scheduling right. purposes. Yeah. You know it's going to be on the third Wednesday every three months or so. Right, right. So, okay. Well, thank you all for making the time and uh, it's a, a pleasure meeting everyone, uh, albeit virtually. So hopefully it'll be in person and so uh, look forward to seeing you and, and staying in touch and, uh, and continuing the dialogue. So um, enjoy you. this is a very unique opportunity. So enjoy the rest of your evening, everyone. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone.